Dubrovnik. Table of contents, Dubrovnik. All about Dubrovnik. With visiting and touring information. Geography. History. Attractions. And author points of interest. Dr. Sidney Socloff. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2022. Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloff. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Coltove. For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is called the Pearl of the Adriatic. This is the flag of Croatia. This is the coat of arms of Croatia. Chapter 2 Geography of Croatia Croatia is in the Balkan region of southeastern Europe. Here is Croatia is in the Balkan region of southeastern Europe. Here are the Balkans. Croatia is bounded by Hungary on the north, Slovenia on the east, Bosnia and Herzegovina on the south, and Serbia on the west. Croatia has a long coastline on the Adriatic Sea. Dubrovnik is on the Adriatic Sea at the southern extreme of Croatia. The population of Croatia is 4.3 million. The four largest cities in Croatia are the capital Zagreb at 800,000, split on the Adriatic at 180,000, Rijeka at 130,000, and Osijek at 110,000. Dubrovnik has a population of only 43,000. This is a relief map of the Balkan region. Note that Croatia as well as the rest of the region is quite mountainous. This is another map of the Balkan region. Here are the present countries in the Balkan region. Bosnia has a few kilometers of seashore in southern Dalmatia, just to the north of Dubrovnik. The capital of Croatia is Zagreb. The towns of Split and Dubrovnik, both popular tourist destination, are along the Adriatic coast. Dubrovnik is a historic city on the Adriatic sea coast in the extreme south of Croatia, positioned at the terminal end of the Isthmus of Dubrovnik. Chapter 3 The History of Croatia the Croats settled in the Balkans in the early 7th century and formed two principalities, Dalmatia and Pannonia. Dalmatia is a region on the eastern coast of the Adriatic Sea. In 1102, Croatia united with the Hungarian Kingdom. After the Battle of Mahoks in 1526, Croatia became a part of the Habsburg Empire. From 1815 to the end of World War I, Croatia was part of the multi-ethnic Austria-Hungarian Empire of the Habsburgs. After the dissolution of the Austria-Hungarian Empire at the end of World War I, Croatia became part of the Kingdom of the Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. This was called the Kingdom of Yugoslavia after 1929 until 1941. From 1941 to 1945 an Axis puppet state known as the Independent State of Croatia was set up. And after the victory of the Allies, Croatia became a republic within Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia changed its name once again after World War II. The new state became the Federal Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia and United Croatia and several other states together under the communist leadership of Marshal Tito, born Josip Broz. 
Croatia remained part of Yugoslavia from the end of World War I and the breakup of the Austria-Hungarian Empire until 1991 in the breakup of Yugoslavia. Croats, in Croatian, Hrvati, are a South Slavic people mostly living in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and nearby countries. There is a notable Croatian diaspora in Western Europe, the Americas, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. The Croats are predominantly Roman Catholic, with a small 4%. Eastern Orthodox minority, and only a 1.3% Muslim population. This is the former Yugoslavia as of January 1st, 2008. Chapter 4 Croatian Independence After the death of Tito and with the fall of communism throughout Eastern Europe, the Yugoslav Federation began to unravel. Croatia held its first multi-party election since World War II in 1990. Longtime Croatian nationalist Franjo Tuđman was elected president. One year later in 1991, Croatians declared independence from Yugoslavia. Conflict between Serbs and Croats in Croatia escalated. And one month after Croatia declared independence, war erupted. Although Croatia declared its independence from Yugoslavia in 1991, it took four years of sporadic, but often bitter, fighting before occupying Serb armies were mostly cleared from Croatian lands. Later the war changed to be a conflict between independent Croatia and rebel Serbs, with the support of Serbia. The war came to an end with signing of the Dayton Agreement in 1995. Under UN supervision, the last Serb-held enclave in eastern Slavonia was returned to Croatia in 1998. Croatia became a member of the UN in 1992. Croatia joined NATO in 2009 and Croatia became the 28th European Union member country in 2013. This is a satellite image of Croatia. Dubrovnik Dubrovnik is called the Pearl of the Adriatic. This is the coat of arms of Dubrovnik. This is the flag of Dubrovnik. The initials SB stand for St. Blasius, the patron saint of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is a historic city on the Adriatic Sea coast in the extreme south of Croatia, positioned at the terminal end of the Isthmus of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is a prominent tourist resort and a seaport. The population is only 50,000. Since 1979, the historic center of Dubrovnik has been included in the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. Supported by wealth and skilled diplomacy, Dubrovnik achieved a remarkable level of development, particularly during the 15th and 16th centuries. Dubrovnik was one of the centers of the development of the Croatian language and literature home to many notable poets, playwrights, painters, mathematicians, physicists and other scholars. The Croats are the ethnic majority in Dubrovnik at 88%. Chapter 6 The History of Dubrovnik This shows the Roman Empire at its greatest extent around 150 AD. Present-day Dubrovnik, then known as Regusa, was in the Roman province of Dalmatia. After the split of the Roman Empire, Dubrovnik was part of the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire, which had its capital at Constantinople. After the Muslim conquests and the rise of the Ottoman Turks, 
Dubrovnik became a tributary of the Ottoman Empire in 1458. This is the Ottoman Empire at its greatest extent in 1580. The prosperity of the city of Dubrovnik has always been based on maritime trade in the Middle Ages as the Republic of Ragusa. It became the only Eastern Adriatic city-state to rival Venice. Originally named Communitas Ragusina, Latin for Ragusan municipality or community. In the 14th century it was renamed Respublica Ragusina, Latin for Ragusa Republic. In Croatian it's called Ubervaca Republica. The Republic of Ragusa was a maritime republic centered on the city of Ragusa or Dubrovnik from the 14th century until 1808. Supported by its wealth and skilled diplomacy, the city achieved a remarkable level of development, particularly during the 15th and 16th centuries. Ragusa was one of the centers of the development of the Croatian language and literature, home to many notable poets, playwrights, painters, mathematicians, physicists and other scholars. The modern name of the city is derived from the Slavic word Dubrava, forest in English in Croatian. The city is known as Dubrovnik and in Dalmatian, Latin, Italian, and formerly in English, as Ragusa. The French army, led by Napoleon, entered Dubrovnik in 1806. Then in 1808 the Dubrovnik Republic was abolished. In 1815, after the defeat of Napoleon and by the resolution of Vienna Congress, Dubrovnik was annexed to Austria, later Austria-Hungary. Dubrovnik remained part of Austria-Hungary until the end of World War I in 1918 when it became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. This was called the Kingdom of Yugoslavia after 1929 until 1941. From 1945 to 1991, Dubrovnik as a city in the Socialistic Republic of Croatia became part of the Federated People's Republic of Yugoslavia. In 1990 Croatia declared independence in October 1991 Dubrovnik was attacked by the Serb Montenegrin army and was under siege for seven months. Finally, in May 1992 the Croatian army liberated Dubrovnik. Today, Dubrovnik is a free and safe town, known worldwide, and the most popular tourist destination in Croatia. Chapter 7 Dubrovnik Sightseeing Dubrovnik is one of the most beautiful cities on the Croatian coast in the Middle Ages. The Republic of Dubrovnik was an important rival of Venice. Many buildings in the old city center exemplify this past and to the Venetian influence. The walls of Dubrovnik surround a perfectly preserved complex of public and private, sacred and secular buildings representing all periods of the city's history beginning with its founding in the 7th century. The Republic of Dubrovnik was the center of a separate political and territorial entity, and was proud of its culture, achievements in commerce and especially of its freedom. Inhabitants of Dubrovnik often proudly quote the Irish playwright and man of letters, George Bernard Shaw who visited the city in 1929, if you want to see heaven on earth, come to Dubrovnik. Today Dubrovnik is a tranquil tourist and cultural center hosting many musical, art and theater events year-round. The annual Dubrovnik Summer Festival is a cultural event when keys of the city are given to artists who entertain Dubrovnik's population and their guests for entire month with live plays, concerts, and games. 
Cruise ship stock at the port of Grezner Dubrovnik. This is the Dubrovnik Bridge of Franjo Tujman and the port of Gruz. These are cruise ships in the port of Gruz. This show the port of Gruz and nearby Dubrovnik. Here is the port of Gruz in the Dubrovnik Old Town. This show the port of Gruz and nearby Dubrovnik. Here are the old town city walls of Dubrovnik. Here is the Stary Grad, or old town, and the city walls that completely encircle the old town. Here is the Stary Grad, or old town, and the city walls that completely encircle the old town. And the newer part of the city beyond the walls, including the adjacent areas of Pile and Plache. This shows the Dubrovnik Old Town, the Main Street, the Stradun, and the Pile, Pile, and Plache, Plache, gates in the city wall. These are some important points of interest in Dubrovnik. Chapter 9 The City Walls of Dubrovnik the city walls of Dubrovnik are among the finest and most complete in Europe. They protected the freedom of Dubrovnik Republic for centuries. They surround the entire old city with their 1.9 kilometers or 1.2 miles of length and up to 25 meters or 82 feet of height. The whole city wall complex was built from the 8th until the 16th century, consisting of an inner and outer section. The outer section of city walls consists of a lower wall, having ten semicircular bastions built by the Italian architects Mitrelazzo. The town is defended by two more separate fortresses, at Revelin on the eastern side, and La Riginac on the southwest side. The moat ran around the outside section of the city walls. The magnificent stone walls surrounding Old Town offer commanding views of the Adriatic Sea below. Southeast of Old Town lies the tourist zone where beaches and hidden bays share the coastline with modern hotels. A trip to Dubrovnik is not complete without a walk along the old city walls. A tour of the impressive city walls that encircle the city should be high on your itinerary. The fee to gain entrance to the walls is only 6 euros. It's interesting to walk on the old city walls. Chapter 10 The Pile Gate and the Stradun This is the old town entrance through the Pile Gate. The statue of Saint Blaise, the patron saint of Dubrovnik, also guards this city entrance. This shows the location of the Pile Gate in the city walls. This is the Pile Gate. The Stradun, or Placa as it is called by the local people, is the largest and the most famous city street in Dubrovnik. It is the city's favorite promenade. This shows the main gate in the city wall, the Pile Gate and the Stadun leading to the Luza Square and Orlando's statue. The Stradun stretches from the Pile Gate all the way to Luza Square, and it's the shortest route between the western and eastern city gates. The Stadun is also a place of large local events and processions, and also is a mercantile artery of old part of the city. Before the big earthquake in 1667, the Stradun was dominated by the luxuriously furnished facade of the local palaces. After the earthquake, the city authorities focused on the reconstruction of the city fortifications and public buildings. So that great extravagance was not encouraged. Because of that, the present facades facing the Stadun look simple and very similar to one another, giving the Stadun almost modest features. 
The Stradun is a wide street, because once there was a channel here that separated the majority Croatian and Roman settlements. The Stradun was created in the 10th and the 11th century by building earthworks over the channel, and unavoidably mixing these two populations thus resulting in a strong Croatian cultural accent to the city. A walk through the Stadun is an unavoidable part of sightseeing in Dubrovnik, with shops and cafeterias all along this unique street. The narrow pedestrian streets that make up Dubrovnik's old section contain many small and unique boutiques and shops, and are well worth exploring. Orlando's Column also called Roland's Column, dates from the 15th century. It is the most significant symbol of Dubrovnik's independence and freedom. The hoisting of the white flag bearing the insignia of St. Blasius on the column in 1419 marked the beginning of the golden period of Raguzan history. The lowering in 1808, when Napoleon's army marched into the city, was the end of that era. Since 1990 Orlando's column has been flying a white flag, which bears one word known and understood by everyone, Libertas. The legend of Orlando is that in the 8th century, he was said to have helped the Dubrovnik people defend themselves from pirate attacks. The length from the statue's wrist to its elbow was the standard measurement for length during the time of the Republic of Dubrovnik. This shows the location of Orlando's statue and the bell tower. The patron saint of the city is Sveti Vlaho, or Saint Blaise, whose statues are seen around the city. He has an importance similar to that of Saint Mark the Evangelist to Venice. This shows the location of the Church of St. Blaise. The Baroque Church of the Dubrovnik's patron St. Blaise, St. Vlaho, is built on the site of an old Romanesque church from 1368 that had been lost in a fire. It gained its final shape in 1715. Anafrio's fountain is in a small square near the Pile Gate. This large fountain was built in 1438 by Italian architect Anafrio della Cava. The fountain is part of the town's water supply system, which Anafrio managed to create by bringing the water from a well 20 kilometers away. This shows the location of Anafrio's fountain near the Pile Gate. After sustaining severe damage in the 1667 earthquake, the fountain was repaired and features 16 masked faces, known as Mascaroni. All trade routes of Dubrovnik Republic went through the Sponza Palace. This marvelous palace was built with the purpose of being a custom house, and is considered the most beautiful in Dubrovnik. The Sponza Palace was built in a mixture of late Gothic and Renaissance styles. The building has the so-called Dubrovnik Manor, the way of building which integrates simplicity and harmony. The facade of the palace has the appearance of a stone lacework. This shows the location of the Sponza Palace near the eastern Orplaka Gate. Chapter 11 The Old Synagogue in Dubrovnik the old synagogue in Dubrovnik is the oldest Sephardic synagogue still in use today in the world, and the second oldest synagogue in Europe. It was established in 1352, but gained legal status in the city in 1408. The main floor still functions as a place of worship for holy days and special occasions but is now mainly a city museum which hosts numerous Jewish ritual items and centuries-old artifacts. The old synagogue is located on Zudioska Street, Jewish Street, right off of the Stadun. The internal layout is different from other European synagogues and has a mixture of designs from different eras. 
The building has sustained damage several times and reopened in 1997. The small museum contains many artifacts from throughout the Jewish community's history in the city. After the expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492, many of the expelled went east and some eventually settled into independent city of Dubrovnik, where there was already a small Jewish community. In 1544, a ship landed filled with Portuguese refugees. Many Jews became traders and craftsmen, dealing with spices, silks, fabrics, and crafts. In 1546, Dubrovnik officials allocated a Jewish settlement within the city, with the main street being called Uli Kozudioska, Jewish Street, in the Dubrovnik ghetto. The 1667 Dubrovnik earthquake caused much damage to the city, including the synagogue. Chapter 12 The Dubrovnik Cathedral This is the Cathedral of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, Velika Gospa. The first Dubrovnik Cathedral was built from the 12th to the 14th century in Romanesque style. It was destroyed in the Great Earthquake in 1667, and the present cathedral was built on its place. The reconstruction of the cathedral was completed in 1713 in a Romanesque Baroque style. This shows the location of the cathedral. The Serbian Orthodox Church and Museum of Icons is Dubrovnik's Orthodox Church. It was built from 1865 to 1877. It houses a number of icons, mainly Byzantine and Cretan. This shows the location of the Serbian Orthodox Church. The Maritime Museum is situated at St. John's Castle. This is a large fortress built to protect the town against the waves of the sea and enemies approaching from the sea. The Maritime Museum has a collection of 4,000 objects which depict the naval history of Dubrovnik and nearby regions. Chapter 12 Croatian Money Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate click on this icon. Croatia is not a member of the European Monetary Union and does not use the euro. The Croatian currency is the kuna. Almost all places readily accept payments in euros. Croatian is a South Slavic language that arrived in the Balkans region with the migration of the Slavs in the 6th or 7th century. This is the family tree of the Indo-European languages of which Slavic is a main branch. This shows some of the major branches of the Indo-European languages. This is the Southern Slavic branch of the Slavic languages, which includes the closely related languages of Serbian, Croatian, Bulgarian, and Slovenian. Here we see the very close relationship between Croatian and Serbian, which are almost mutually intelligible. Here are some words in Croatian and the correspond words in English. Croatia's eventful history with a series of occupying powers, Ottoman, Venetian, Habsburg, and Italian enriched the language with new German, Turkish and Italian words. The primary difference between Croatian and Serbian is that Croatian is written in the Roman alphabet, while Serbian is written in Cyrillic. Croatians, Serbians and Bosnians generally do understand each other when they speak, if they want to. English is widely although not universally spoken. English is now the second language of choice. Here are the numbers 1 to 12 in Croatian. Recommended videos, Dubrovnik. Recommended video, Dubrovnik Vacation Travel Guide.
Expedia. Recommended video, things to do in Dubrovnik, Croatia, top 10. Recommended video, Dubrovnik, Croatia, vacation travel video guide, 9 minutes, 22 seconds. Recommended video, Geography Now, Croatia, Table of Contents, Dubrovnik. Thanks for watching.